Good morning and welcome to Cindy's Kitchen. So glad that you are here this morning. It is Saturday here in Houston, Texas, and quite frankly, uh, we've got some decent weather. Sunny, I think the high is supposed to be in the 80s today. We may get a little shower, but for right now, it's a gorgeous day. So I don't know where you are or what your weather is, but I wanna welcome you to our cooking community. If you're brand new, this is not just a cooking show. We talk, we share our lives, we share our recipes. So pull up a bar stool, a kitchen chair around your table, or relax in your recliner. And, uh, and, and welcome, we're really glad you're here. Good morning, Alice. Hey, Loisanne, good morning. Jessica's here, Debbie's here. Good to see you, Alice. You got the notification today, that's fantastic. You just never know, do you, with social media? Um, and with Facebook, you have no idea of how things are gonna go. Good morning, Sue. There's Julie from Northwest Houston. Barb is watching, good to see you. Make sure you say hello. Uh, if you're brand new, let us know that as well. Hello, Denise, good to see you. Oh, Nina's on today. We haven't seen Nina in a couple of days. Debbie, you got the notification. Good. Oh, it's raining in Chicago. I'm so sorry. I, like I said, I think we have like a 20% chance of showers today, but so far, all is sunshiny outside right now. Uh, so that's a good thing. Make sure you say hello. Lisa, good to see you from Forney. Lisa's an old HG friend. Good to see you. Heather, oh, it's raining at your place too. Goodness. Day three of flooring install. You just want to clean and put it away. Well, I still have people in my bathroom, so if we hear noises, there you go. Gail, gloomy Chicago land. I know, isn't it gorgeous? Me too. Janet, 80 today, 51 on Thursday. That's a big jump. Uh, Janet, you know, there are days in Houston where it does all that in one day. Like, it's 80, and then a cold front hits, and zoom, 51. <laughs> you love rainy days. Rainy days in my... Wait, rainy days in something. What is the Monday, Monday? Rainy days and Mondays always get me down. Are those the lyrics? I can't remember. But there you go. Um... I don't mind rainy days, but you know, with the whole arthritis thing, it sometimes makes it a little eh, -eh. Joe Ann, it's sunny in Michigan. Well, that's a big difference from Chicago, isn't it? Rainy days and Mondays, there you go. Rainy days and Mondays always get me down. Something like that, there you go. Terry, good morning, good to see you from Enid. Mondays, that's it, there you go. Well, just what you needed to start your day with my gravelly voice, right? <laughs> well, we're going to get started. I am curious. I think it is the Carpenters. It's either the Carpenters or the Mamas and the Papas. I can't remember. But um, who has this mug? I'm just curious. Um, who has this one? It is one of my favorite patterns just because, one, I love the red, and two, it is so bold, right? It's just a bold, good morning, hello, there you are. So I'm gonna dig out the, um, I forgot to dig out the matching plate that goes with this, and I think we'll use that today. Sylvia, good morning from California. It's, uh, it's a little early for you, right? The Carpenters, okay. All right, so, um, well, I guess nobody else has this mug. I guess I'm the only one. Ah, oh. <laughs> let us do our coffee clinks, shall we? Everybody raise your mug, whether it be filled with coffee or tea or water or soda or lemonade or whatever it is you're drinking and let us do our coffee clinks. Cheers. Mm. It's over here, honey. It's a tray. Sorry, we were looking for the tray. All right. So it is a pretty one. All right, so let us begin, shall we? All right, so this, this will tell you uh, what a goofball I am. I picked out two recipes today that I wanted to do out of one of my old cookbooks. And um, 
last night, Philip and I, nobody else was home. Mom has it. There you go. Mom has it. Um, last night, here's the tray that goes with it. See, there's the tray. Isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous, I tell ya. Gorgeous. Anyway, so, um, Philip and I went out to dinner last night, which was kind of nice to have a date night. Um, we went to a Cajun place, and I had crawfish uh, bisque. He had gum seafood gumbo, and then we split um, a, an order of fried crawfish tails and fried alligator. So that was our dinner last night, um, but it was quite delicious. Yum. Um, Anyway, so, but on the way home, I said, oh, good, I need to stop at the grocery store. Can we go? Because I need to get stuff for tomorrow's show. So he said, yeah. Well, I got everything but one thing. And one of the things was a major thing. So I'm going to have to, I'm using something that may or may not work. We'll see how it all goes, right? All right. So let's get started. Cajun, I love Cajun food. Oh, Cajun, I think my two favorites are Mexican and Cajun. And I think part of that is we just like the spice. We like all the spices. And I'm not talking about we like it hot, although we do. But I think Cajun food, Indian food's the same way. Cajun food, Mexican food, Indian food. There's just a lot of nice, fresh spices in there. And so that makes me happy. Oh, alligator, it does not taste like chicken, but you know, it tastes like another kind of seafood. So, all right, so let's get started. I'm going to start, I have to go to the refrigerator because I left it in the refrigerator until right before we started. I'm starting with a store-bought pizza crust, okay? Um, we've, does gator taste like chicken? See, I knew everybody was going to say that. Good morning, Noreen. Good to see you. All right, so um, this, is the, this is the scary part. Ready? Eek, 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 eek. Oh, it hasn't gone yet. Okay, it's like these and biscuits. Pop, I'm a spicy cup, I'm a spicy girl. You go for the sweeter flavors. Well, and that's fine too, you know, everybody's got your own taste and, I mean, it's one of the reasons when I do recipes, poof, um, I try to, I know it, it was a little pop, it was a baby pop. I try to make sure that I let you know that of other things that you can put in so that you don't feel like, oh, well, you know, that's not something we would eat. You can make it so it'll make you. All right, um, I just have, I, I could put it flat on my countertop and I probably would, but that's a big mess. Frog legs taste like chicken. Now, Lydia, frog legs do kind of taste like chicken. They do, I've had those before too. All right, so I'm gonna put a little flour on here. Um, I'm not really, oh, Debbie, that is so kind of you to say. I, I appreciate that. I, I love that you love it and that, that you're on here. So I'm just going to put a little flour down on my um, cutting board. And you can roll this out if you want, but I'm not going to. So there you go. I'm just going to leave it the size that it is, okay? Because it's pretty big. I don't, I don't think I need bigger than that. All right, so I'm going to unroll. I'm going to tilt you down just a little bit. Always interested in spicy. All the fellas... They love the spice and the heat. Oh, well, there you go. Christine, good morning, and good morning. Okay, so here's our, our, our uh, pizza dough, and I'm just gonna unroll it. So, because this comes in a, um, although, let me see. Ugh, there we go. Um, in a rectangle, right? I may end up having to put this on the, on the countertop. All right. So we just unrolled it. If you want uh, to make this bigger, you certainly could get your rolling pin. Spicy doesn't like you. Well, you know, here's the thing. Um, there are ways to, um, to make your food tasty with more spices without making it hot. And so there you go. Was that a thin crust or a thicker crust? Oh, this says thin. This says thin crust. So maybe, maybe that's the difference. Thank you for asking, Debbie. I didn't even pay attention. I didn't pay attention when I bought it at the store. I just picked it up. So there we go. All right, so I've got it all spread out. There we go. See, ta and da. <laughs> okay, um, now, 
What we're gonna be basically making is a pizza, but it's not gonna be a pizza, just square. We're gonna kinda do a pizza roll up, which I thought was fun. And when we get done, you have two options. You can, because we're gonna put this all in here, roll it up like a jelly roll, cut it, and then you can either put it in a dish like this, right, a, a pie plate, this is a deeper pie plate, or you can cut them and put them in a muffin tin. Now, I, I think the muffin tin would probably cook faster than this other one, so I may try that one first, we'll see. All right, so the first thing you have to do is put your sauce on. I did buy a new thing. It was at the grocery store at the um, on the, the uh, discount thing. It's this. I, I know that I think Pampered Chef sells one or somebody else does, but I've always used, um, it may have been a Pampered Chef, but it's a brush. That's the one I've always used, but I kind of like the silicon thing. And it was a dollar, so you know, a dollar. Okay, so I've got some pizza sauce here, and actually that's kind of a fib. It's not really pizza sauce. I just took tomato sauce and added a whole bunch of um, Italian spices, really, because I didn't have pizza sauce, and I didn't want to buy a big thing of pizza sauce just for this, so there you go. I can use this for a whole lot of things. Now, if you don't have one of these handy dandy uh, brushy things, you don't need a handy dandy brushy thing, right? You could, you could just get a spoon. Right? Any kind of spoon. A year ago today, no. Did we really? Oh my gosh. So Jessica just looked. Oh, we got noises. Jessica just looked back on the Cindy's Kitchen history. And a year ago today, we had a pizza party. The five pizzas. The five pizzas that we did. Oh my goodness. Isn't that a small world? I don't know. Maybe when you want pizza, you just want pizza. Um. Yeah, you don't have to worry about the bristles. You're right. Um, I, and I never really had it too terribly. The only time I had the bristle issue is when I went to wash it, you know. So, there we go. All right, so you can use a fun little brush that is a regular brush. You can use a silicone one. Or, of course, you can just use the back of the spoon. That is easy. I don't want you to feel like you have to go buy stuff. Somebody said on the show a couple of weeks ago that every time they watch Cindy's Kitchen, it costs them money. And I don't want that to happen. I mean, if you go to the grocery store and you feed your family on it, that's, you know, I don't have a problem with that. But, but I certainly don't want anybody spending money if you don't have to. Okay, obviously you can put this on here as thick or as thin as you want it. Um, I'm putting a, oh, I don't know, kind of a medium layer, maybe, maybe thin-ish. But anyway, all right, so there we go. All spread out, can you see that? There we go. And then, um, I did say today was pepperoni day, and so I've just got a bag of these pre-cut pepperonis. Now, we're gonna be rolling this up, so keep that in mind as you lay your pepperoni, okay? You could use turkey pepperoni. Every time you watch it, it makes you hungry. Well, that's okay, Julie. All right, so we've got our pepperoni. Um, uh, I'm gonna start down here, I think. Now, again, this is wholly up to you. If you don't like pepperoni, um, or you, like I said, you can do the turkey pepperoni. I think they have fake pepperoni, you know, like plant-based, whatever. Um, you could use sausage. Yeah, it is true, right? <laughs> um, you could use sausage, you could fry up some sausage. I, I wouldn't necessarily put raw meat on this, um, just because I don't think it, it's, we're not going to cook it long enough for the meat to cook. If you wanted chicken, you could put chicken on here. If you are no meat, uh, you certainly could uh, just put veggies on here. So all of that is good. If I was making this just for my raining here, oh, but well, I'm trying to give you some sunshine. Thank you, Joan. That makes me so happy. You guys... You guys know how to really brighten a day. Thank you. I mean, the sun is shining here, but but you guys really are a lot of sunshine. So thank you. Okay, that piece is a little thicker. I'm not going to use that one. So anyway, again, as much or as little pepperoni. The mini pepperonis. Yes, 
The only, yeah, my only concern with the mini pepperonis is sometimes those are thicker and it, it might be a little hard to roll. But I think if you didn't, if you didn't do it to, I'm just gonna stop there, okay? So you could go all the way across, but that's all I'm gonna do with that, okay? And then I'm gonna put uh, some mozzarella cheese. Mozzarella. Canadian bacon would be great. Um, who all, what is your favorite pizza? Tell me, tell me what your favorite pizza is. Actually, I have a couple. There used to be this restaurant, this pizza place. I've told you this before, I think. Um, this pizza place in Houston, like inside the loop, I think. And it was called Barry's Pizza. And it could still be there. I don't know. Um, and they had the most delicious spinach and garlic pizza. And I've never had another one, even when I've made it. Joan, you're in Florida. Oh, well, I'm glad it's sunny there. Are you on a trip, Joan? Because you're not... You're usually from uh, Illinois, I thought, or I could be wrong. Um, anyway, so they had a really good one. There is a place around here that makes a really good Greek pizza. I like Greek pizza with um, pepperoncini and um, uh, feta cheese and all uh, Kalamata olives. Oh, that's good. Jessica doesn't like that because Jessica doesn't like olives at all. Okay, so you could put uh, sausage, mushroom, onion, peppers, olives. That sounds good. Motor City. It's in the frozen food section? Huh, I've never heard of it. Motor City. I, I, okay, I'm, I'm guessing that's like a... Uh, not Pittsburgh, that's steel. Where's General Motors? Um, Detroit. Is that a Detroit company? I don't know. Oh, no, Joan, you do live in Florida. Okay, well, there you go. What do I know? See, I have COVID brain. Anyway, uh, and then I think I'm going to, I've just got some Italian seasoning. Detroit, yeah. Olives, artichoke, yum. Yep, Terry, I, I have to, everything but jalapeno. Village Inn makes the best. Cauliflower crust is a new favorite. Mm, yeah. Joanne. Sent, uh, posted something. This is just a, a, an Italian seasoning with garlic in it. Um, Joanne posted something about an ask. It was a picture of zoodles and asked, have I ever made zoodles? And I want to say we did zoodles on the show at some point. But that being said, I like zucchini. You know I do because I've made it a lot. White pizza, white sauce, chicken, bacon, Canadian bacon, mushrooms, onions, peppers. Yum. I like white too. And the reason I like white, taco pizzas, those are good too. Anything but green pepper. Gail, me too. Anyway, so she asked about the zoodles. So I love zucchini, don't get me wrong, but I, I don't know. In the end, it is still cauliflower, just saying. All right, so I have some Italian seasoning on there. The last thing I think I wanna put on there is some basil. So um, this is from outside. If I know that my Italian seasonings had basil in it, Lou Mal Malnati's Pizzeria, any of their pizzas. Yes, Lisa, it is the tastefully simple, that is what it is. It's tastefully simple Italian garlic bread seasoning. It's my favorite from, from, tastefully, uh, from tastefully simple. It is. Um, I use it on everything. <laughs> Uh, it was one of the few, um, I think I bought a ton of them. All right, so again, you know how I do with the basil. Just stack the leaves all up, okay? Stack the leaves all up, give them a roll, give them a roll, and then we're just gonna do it like this. Remember, it's called the chiffonade. All right. Again, you don't need to put the fresh basil on here because the... Um, your Italian seasoning. Hey, Kim Sharp. Yep. So both Lisa and Kim, um, we all were with Homemade Gourmet and then Homemade Gourmet uh, sold out to Tastefully Simple. And so all of us worked for Tastefully Simple for a while and they still do, I do believe. I know Kim does. I think Lisa does. I'm not certain. Anyway, uh, so there we go. You don't have to do the fresh. Because, like I said, that this, your Italian seasoning has basil in it. 
but I'm just a, you know what, let's just go all out kind of a deal. So there we go, look how gorgeous that is. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Now I know that some, I am gonna put a little parm on here. I know that some of you may ask, oh, Lisa does too, okay. Um, what about tomatoes? And you know how I love tomatoes. My only concern with using tomatoes on this is the amount of liquid in the tomatoes, right? Because I wouldn't want this to be goopy in the middle, right? I'd want it to cook. Okay, so we got it all on there, and now we're gonna roll it up jelly style. We'll see how good I can do this, okay? So we're gonna roll it like this. I know that it would probably be better, you've probably seen on some shows where they put the plastic wrap underneath this, Favorite pizza, extra large cheese with black olives and mushrooms and pepperonis, yum. Dried tomatoes. Now that's an option. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that if you use regular tomatoes, that there would just be too much liquid. Yeah, sun-dried would probably be better. Okay, we're rolling, 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 rolling. Keep that pizza rolling, right. Okay, I'm just gonna pull this over because I'm getting a little thick. Roll and roll. Okay, so there we go. Gonna pinch, gonna pinch together because we don't want this to be oozy. No oozy. Um, I'm gonna kind of shove everything in the ends. Go in the ends there. Okay, so here we go. There we go. It's all good, right? Except I got stuff on my hands now. All right, it's all good. Again, at this point when we cut it, I'm gonna cut it. You have an option. You can, was organizing my recipe cabinet and found about 10 recipe cards for homemade gourmet that you'd forgotten that you had. Oh, I still, um, hey, Donna, what, here, Donna, Lisa, and um, uh, Kim. Oh, Craig, where is it? Where's my uh, chicken angel? Oh, here it is. Hold on, I'm gonna show you. I'm digging. I made it homemade. Look, look, look. Oh, it's backwards. Chicken enchilada soup mix. Do you miss this? Do you miss this? So good, so good. Anyway, all right. So I've got it all rolled up. So again, you have some options and you can put it in a, in a like a deep dish round like this. What I think I'm gonna do uh, is, is, is make them a little smaller and put them in my muffin tins. Two reasons. One, I think it'll cook a little faster for us. And um, so there you go. All right, so, well, oh, okay. I'm giving these a little squirt. There we go. And then, so I've got six. You need the recipe. I'll try to, re Lisa, send me a message and I'll try to remember. All right, so I'm gonna go in the center, center, and squish down and cut. Now that gives me, so six will go over there, uh, and then I'm gonna go in the center here. I'm not good at figuring out exact measurements, so that's why I kinda do from the middle. Hey, so of course you made it, Cindy. <laughs> I know, cause I got rid of a lot of them and then I felt bad, that, so I wanted to use it. All right, so then I'm gonna cut the these into thirds, All right, so you see how when I cut down, one end kind of squished, pick it up, but there it is. So I'm gonna put it in my little muffy tin. Hold on, and I'll kind of, let me, let me do the other three, and then I'll show you what it looks like, okay? Let me show ya. And again, if you don't wanna do muffin tins, you certainly could uh, just stick it all in one big container. If you do that, you might want to just cut like, I don't know, maybe eight to fit in here. But I've made these a little smaller. Okay, look at this. <gasps> oh, see, like some of our, pep our pepperonis are sticking out, but that's okay. Look how good. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. All right, let me cut this other one. And then we'll put both of these in. Now, we want these in the oven at 400 degrees for how long you say well again that's gonna that's gonna make a little bit of a difference on what cooking vessel you choose okay 
Hello, Michelle. Hello, Denise. Um, if you choose the muffin tin, I, I, I'm thinking that it will take less time to cook than if we put it in the, in the big round one. And the reason I say that, I mean, it sounds like common sense, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure, um, is that if we put it in the, um, oops, I made a, a little tiny mess, but that's okay. All right. Let me wipe my fingers and you can look at all of them. Oh, Jessica just took one, that's okay. All right, here's the other one. Here's what I think. These, right, cook time will be less because if I cook it in this, it's gonna take longer for the heat to get into the middle. So that's why I chose to do this, especially for this show. But you know, I, I don't think more than about 20 minutes in here, so maybe a little less time. All right, 400 degrees. We're gonna put these in, and we're gonna start on our other, our other. Okay. <laughs> hey, Susan, good to see you. Definitely less time with the smaller portions, yes. Okay, now the next thing I was gonna make was kind of a, a uh, like a focaccia bread, but not a focaccia bread. You know how, I know that there are so many of you that make homemade breads, and I'm in awe of you. I just do not have the patience. I do not have the patience. That being said, you know how I like the, the frozen bread dough, right? Okay, this recipe starts out with a loaf of frozen bread dough. Now, when you get the frozen bread dough, you, what you're supposed to do is you put it you spray your bread pan, you put it in there, you spray the top of the bread pan with cooking spray, and then you cover it with um, plastic wrap, right? Okay. Well, that's what I forgot at the grocery store. So I'm like, well, how do I make the focaccia bread if I forgot that? And so with this morning when I figured out that I'd forgotten it, it wouldn't have thawed out in time. But in my freezer, I did have the frozen yeast well. Okay, I have, I have a favor to ask. Anybody that knows anything about doing any lives on Facebook, if you can help me figure out. So used to, I would hit the wand. I can make bread in the crock pot. I have not made bread in the crock pot. Um, it, you'd hit the wand at the bottom, and then after you hit the wand, a wrench and a hammer, or a wrench and a screwdriver came up, and you click that, and then you hit the flip button, and it flipped it, so it said Cindy's Kitchen and not backwards. Well, now, the wand is still there, but when you hit the wand, that doesn't come up. So I don't know how to flip it so you can read stuff. So if anybody would like to help me out, I certainly would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, so no big bread. All I had was these little ones, okay? So there you go, the little baby ones. So at first I thought, well, that's okay. I'll put these all together and roll them together. And of course we can do that. But then I got to thinking, eh, I think I'm just gonna make baby one of these two. So I'm gonna put a little bit of, of flour on this one, just because I don't want it all sticky. And then, aren't these cute, cute little rolls? And so, they're all defrosted now. Granite, you know, it's not real granite. It's like silestone or, you know, it was whatever was cheaper. Although, you know what's right now? Um, the man-made stuff is more expensive than granite. How did that happen? Anyway, it, so it used to be the other way around. When we had our kitchen done like 18 years ago, no, 15 years ago, this was the cheaper version, but then it changed. All right, so uh, obviously we could get a rolling pin out and do one of those numbers, right? I'm just using my hands. Um, all right, now focaccia bread is rectangle, right? Maybe I should get the rolling pin. Hold on, I'll get the rolling pin. Okay. I have the rolling pin. All right, so let's say we roll these out. Um, I'm not good, I don't know how anybody rolls a square, right? Or a, a, a rectangle. 
So mine are gonna be more of a squoval. <laughs> you like that word, a squoval. Okay, so look at that. Looks like a teardrop, doesn't it? Okay, um, this is a pizza, you know, you, a pizza stone where you can bake on this, but um, it, you don't have to have one of these if you uh, wanna put it on a baking dish with some uh, parchment paper, you could do that. I know the rolling pin is pretty, isn't it? Your countertops are quartz. Oh, no, I, I wanna say they're not because, like I said, it was like 15 years ago, that was too expensive for me. <laughs> of course, I'm always doing what is the cheapest, right? Um, that's just me. I want things to look nice, but, mm. Oh, so they're still working on my bathroom. Uh, so I'll have you guess, right? So um, the floors in there are kind of like a terracotta. And I can't, I can't change the floors because, oh, you have the same pattern. Oh, countertops. Oh, well then maybe they are. Um, anyway, but we got new, uh, they had to rebuild the shower. And so the shower used to match the floor, but I didn't want that. And then we had to get a new countertop and that doesn't match either. Pull your corners to create the square. Oh, you have style stone, I like it better. Pull the corners to make, okay, Nancy. Pulling my corners. Pulling, thank you, Nancy. Okay, well, it's kind of a square, kind of a square. There we go. Ah! Okay, I think I can do a couple of these. Um, and just so you, just so you kind of get the, the hint on how this, if you had the big, if you had the, the big um, thing of dough, then you just roll that out. And, and quite frankly, then you're, you're at the triangle stage already pretty much. So um, anyhow, so I had to replace it. Okay, things do not match. And I was trying to figure out what color to paint the walls. Well, the grayish color, it was like a grayish white. The grayish color looked awful up against the tannish kind of tiles. The tannish color looked awful up against the, um, the silvery, I mean, it has a little bit of gray countertops. So I, I was really, I have no idea, you know, like what color, what color. And I looked back and forth on these color swatches and it's driving me absolutely bazonkers. I am not good at color coordinating. Like, I know you'll laugh at this, but if I need new clothes, and, and the, it's not an outfit that's sold all together, I take my husband with me. My husband is awesome at picking colors. Like, he's really good at finding things that match really well. I am terrible, absolutely terrible at it. But he's working at the hospital and hasn't been home. Um, I thought about blue, but the blue seemed to have too much gray in it. And so that was an issue too. So, um, and so I'm like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, so everybody guess, what color did I pick? What color did I pick? All right, so now I have my little non-rectangles. <laughs> Squovels, right? I could do. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the corners, even though I just made them flat, and I'm just going to uh, tilt them up so I've made almost like a little boat. Okay, can you see that? Wait, I took you. I know, I know. Okay, you see? There we go. I went with Kim to buy a dress once. Brown. No, because the brown looked bad next to the gray. White. No, well, the ceiling's white. Coral. Oh, that would have been an option. Well, I didn't think about that. Peach. No, that was the color of the walls before. Oh, Terry got it. Come on. Most of you who know me have to be chuckling right now, right? If you don't already know, Terry got it. Ding, 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 ding. Um, I, I, paint, I had him paint the walls purple. Ha, 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 purple. 
So it's not like dark purple. It is like a lavender, um, but it was the only thing that kind of went with everything. All right, so I've made kind of a little boat. See that? See, I've just kind of, it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, you can tell right, see right there? See, so I just made like a little boat. You were gonna say purple. I know you should have. Of course it has to be purple. Hey, Vicki, um, Lisa is on. Um, Kim is on. Uh, we were doing the homemade gourmet thing and then, cause I use this from Tastefully Simple, the Italian thing. And then I was telling them about my chicken enchilada sauce. I mean, my chicken enchilada mix. <laughs> well, purple is my favorite color too. Okay, so now we have uh, all of this, right? We're gonna need a little olive oil. Hey, Jess, could you rinse that out for me, please? Thank you. All right, so we're gonna need a little olive oil on here. So, olive oil. Can you use, I, I know, I'm waiting to take you guys on a tour until it's done. I'm just gonna put a little, a little tiny bit um, on each one of them, and then I'll brush it. Again, if you don't have a brush, don't go buy a brush. Just use the back of a spoon, but you know, there you go, all right? So look, here we go. Oh, the grandmother Sunday roast seasoning. I know, good, right? Okay, so you see how we're just brushing that oil so that we get it all over our lovely little mock faux, fa faux focaccia. Faux focaccia, that's something, right? All right. I think it's really funny. So I, I have to tell a story. Um, Terry and I went to high school together and she and another girl and I were like best friends. We were like the three musketeers, three stooges, whatever you want to call us. And um, we were best friends in junior high. And, and I found, okay, when I brushed it, I kind of, oh, Nina wants to know how your OBX vacay was, Jess. She says, wonderful. She, she smiled. Um, say that three times fast. I know, right? Fofakasha, fo fofakasha, fofakasha, fofakasha. There, I did it. Ha! All right. So now we got to decide what else we're going to put on this focaccia bread. What would you guys put on a focaccia bread? I'm going to show you what I'm putting on mine. But you tell me, what would you put on your focaccia? While I get out what I'm going to put on mine. Now... One of the recipes for the faux focaccia, if I've just made that up, right? Um, it is one of my favorite seasonings too, is to put green olives on here, which would be fine, except that Jessica wouldn't eat it. And then I would feel really bad. I'm gonna use some smoked Gouda. <gasps> because it's so Gouda. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna do a little... Um, I should have put this in the freezer. I'm not gonna put tomato sauce on the focaccia. I want this to be a little, a little different than the pizzas. <laughs> oh, there goes the dogs. Um, if you put your cheese in the freezer before you need to shred it, it shreds much better. But I neglected to do that. And so it's a little wussy. Wussy, that's probably not a good thing. Okay. So I'm gonna put a little of this, you know, we don't need a whole lot, right? These aren't like cheese, although it's not like cheese toast or anything. All right, this is kind of big. Ah! Kind of big, big little, although, is there anything such as too much? Herbs and fresh parm, so gouda. <laughs> I know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a goober. All right, so I've got the smoked Gouda on there. Yum. Uh, I would say let's put on some more Italian herbs. And again, any blend that you have would be great. Just because I'm using this one doesn't mean you necessarily have to. Um, it's just one of my faves. And so I'm just gonna sprinkle. I like this one because it has all the herbs in it, but it's got a butt ton. Oh, that was bad, a ton of garlic in there and you know how I feel about garlic. We ordered garlic bread to go with our, um, he had gumbo, I had crawfish bisque last night and um, he said, how's your garlic bread? And I said, needs more garlic. <laughs> All right, so I've got that. Um, 
You know what? Let's do some parsley. How about that? Let's do some parsley. Let me move this. Uh, this is from outside as well. You put seeds, oh, in your focaccia. Okay, well, I, I guess I could have rolled them in there, right? Let me get this knife and we'll, we'll cut some of this fresh parsley. I decided since we did basil on the other, what kind of seeds do you use? Like, I don't know what kind of seeds. Like sesame seeds or what kind of? How's our, how's our pizza doing? Good? I'm in there, almost. Almost done, okay. I love chopping fresh herbs. I really, really, really do. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Oh, parsley, parsley. There we go. There we go, parsley. And then on this one, mmm, yum. Okay, oh, there go the dogs again. Okay, and because Terry said, um, parm, we'll put just a little parm on top too. So we'll have two different kinds of cheese. How about that? All right, so we have our, just our frozen bread dough that we've rolled out. And again, if you were making this like you're supposed to make it, you would just have a big roll. Oh, poppy seeds, black and white sesame sunflower. You're a seed girl, you're seedy. I'm spicy, you're seedy. Okay, that's it, look, ta and da. We have olive oil on there, we have some smoked gouda, we have some Italian seasonings. We have fresh parsley that we've cut up, and then we have some parm on the top. Um, I am going to uh, pop this in a 350 degree oven. Okay, on the bottom. Okay. 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 Get them out. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. All right, now I've made a big mess. But see, I have all these left over, so, and they're already thawed out. Because a lot of times what I do is I will just thaw these out in my muffin tin and then we have rolls. There you go. And you can top these. The thing I love about frozen dough is you can top it with the everything bagel, which is one of my favorites, or garlic, or cinnamon sugar, or, you know, and so you've taken this dough and you can do so much with the dough. And I know some of you are going, Cindy, it would have been just as easy. They should have garlic powder shakers on top. I agree, Heather. There should be salt, pepper, and garlic. I agree wholeheartedly. Heather, let us put together a, uh, a petition for all the restaurants to have garlic. That would be a garlic shaker. Man, yum. I think that's so good. All right. You ready to look at our pizza? All right, Jess is gonna bring one over. Here we go. Ooh, ah, ooh. It's hot, hot, she says. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull one out uh, just to put on our little plate. Do I get the pretty one or the stuff that has the most guck in it? Um, I'm going with the stuff that has the most guck in it. Hold on, I need a... We really should let these cool. Put a baby bell inside and cover with everything seasoning. Oh, Terry, that is so naughty. I love that idea. But isn't the baby bell too thick just for a roll? Maybe two rolls. Although, no, maybe not. That could be good. All right. So, um, oh, look, 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 look at that. Look how lovely that is. Lovely. All right, so we'll put one here. Um, and then this one, this one looks delightful. Oh. Ow, hot, 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 Okay, look. So, look, I know that everybody thinks that you can't buy more coffee mugs because you don't drink coffee or you don't drink tea. But I have to tell you, this is a 16 ounce mug and I drink water in this. I drink tea in this. You could, it naughty, I know, right? Mmm. Wouldn't this be a lovely lunch tray for you? Some iced tea or some water? And those. I know, easy peasy. Now, I think it would be just as easy to do it in this, right? And so, instead of in the individual muffin tins, but, you know, cut up a string, a stick of string cheese for the smaller pieces. Heather, that's a good idea. 
If I had any string cheese, I would do that. All right, I'm trying to let it cool just a little bit because it is so hot. It is so hot. Wow. Okay. Um, I, you know, it's Saturday and there for a long time we did adult beverages every Saturday and I kind of got out of the habit. Um, partially because Saturdays we did a whole lot of stuff. Like if you remember last Saturday, we did the dollar store thing. And um, so I've kind of stopped. Hadley is listening to you and said, it's you. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Hadley, your mom and I are very, very much alike. Um, spread of laughing cow, creamy garlic and herb. <gasps> Lisa, that sounds really good. I wanted to get some feedback from you guys about um, shows that you might be interested in. Would phyllo dough work? It's going to be totally different. Because, you know, phyllo dough, all those individual. I'm not thinking so, Nina. I mean, it, you could try and let me know, but... Because really, if you're going to use phyllo dough correctly, I mean, you know this. If you're going to use phyllo dough correctly, you really need to brush it between every teeny tiny little layer. Oh, making baklava wears me out. I don't know about you if you've ever made homemade baklava, but making baklava wears me out just because you have to brush each one and I, my patience level. Anyway, so I've noticed on, um, on like YouTube and some other things that one of the most um, popular cooking things is like so many meals for so many dollars, right? And so they may say something like, you know, 10 meals for $20 or something like, you know, feeding a family of four for $20 or something like that. Um, and it seems to be been there, done that, just trying to, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but you know what? Just make some homemade baklava and you can use that phyllo dough. <laughs> um, and so I was wondering, is that something that you guys would be interested in? I mean, okay. And you can tell me, would you be interested in it to save money? Or would you be interested in it for the, the, the comic relief? <laughs> phyllo dough pizza crust is to die for, but takes a long time. Yeah, I can imagine, Terry. Again, it's just because you have to do each layer, right? All right, let me check the oven. Because I don't know what Jess is doing up there. Oh. oh, we have a little bit to go. All right, so let's taste, shall we? I think it's cooled off enough, although it's still very hot. Okay, look. Ouch. These are like hot, hot, hot. I'm going to take a knife and cut it in half. How about them apples? Okay. So would you guys be interested in that? I like trying new recipes too, but... You know, like I said, the thing that seems to be so popular now on all these channels is, is doing it, you know, so much. Hold on. I have a string. Well, there we go. Uh, so many meals for so much dollars. Okay, look at the inside. <gasps> look at the pretty stripes. Look at the pretty stripes. That's the inside, right? Okay, ready to take a bite. I'm taking a bite of this one because I can see the pepperoni there. Mm. Ready? Okay, firstly, I like what you do. You like what I do. Okay, snow is circling. I know. <gasps> snow got into... Oh. So, Mo, Jessica's dog, eats little Caesars. All sealed up, right? You can't smell from inside that. Snow got a hold of an entire package, like a case of the little Caesars, and opened every one of them and ate them. Yes, please. Anything new and different. Cook so much of the same old so milk. Okay. I love the Dollar Tree show. That was fun and cheap. Yes. You like the show as is. All right. Well, I know, but so Nancy, I was thinking just maybe throw one in. I'm not saying let's. Good morning from Hawaii, Jean. Good to see you. Pizza for breakfast. Okay. I'm going to take the bite now. Not as a regular thing. Yeah. I was just thinking maybe we'd throw one in every now and then. Okay. I'm tasting. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, I don't know that I do 20 meals ahead of time. That's a lot. Mm. Right. I understand, Jean. Mm. Oh, this is so good. Mm. It is so good. And so, the crust on the outside... 
is a little toothsome because you can see it's browned. So you get a little chew from the inside, but it's soft. It's like a pillow in the inside. Try a restaurant show once in a while. Like go to the restaurant. Mmm. I keep telling you, we need to do a copycat. Mmm. It's really good. You love me because I'm different. You love me. You really love me. Oh. Thanks, Janet. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Okay. If anybody tries these, mm, please, please, please take a picture and let me know. You kind of did that when you showed us how to take the pork tenderloin and make three things. That's right, Heather. We did do that. We did three different things with the one pork tenderloin that we bought. Copycat recipes yes. are sometimes better. Yes. Okay. We'll see. We don't go out to like national chain restaurants a whole lot. We used to, oh, hold on, I have to sneeze. Pardon me. Pardon me. One more. One more. No, no. Anyway, we don't do the major chains really. We tend to go um, more like Indian, res uh, Indian restaurants, Mediterranean restaurants, Thai restaurants. We go to places that serve things that I don't really cook a whole lot of. Um, so that's what we do. Or things that I wanna try, like African food is to die for. It's so good and you would think, what? Um, so I always like trying new things. I do, I do, I do, I do. Okay, all right. All right, let me check on our focaccia. We're almost there and we're over time. I guess I chitty chatted way too much. You know what I'm gonna do while we're talking and we're waiting? I'm gonna go ahead and roll out the other one. Yes to all the above, Thai, Greek, Indian, German. I know it's all good, right? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. And that way, at least you can see what the other one would look like, okay? All right, flour. African food is so good. Repurpose leftovers like round two. You know, I don't mind doing that, but I have to tell you that there are a whole lot of people, and, and I never got this because I don't throw anything away. I mean, well, not a whole lot. Um, there are a whole lot of people out there, I think men especially, that are like, I will not eat leftovers, which, you know, I don't get, but... Um, Oh, poop. Poop. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to do, because I've got that smoked Gouda. I think I'm going to do the smoked Gouda on this one. Um, anyway, so um, so that's hard for leftovers. Um, Gail, so when we worked for Homemade Gourmet, um, there was a thing that, um, the, that we did. It was called Cook Once, Serve Twice. Cost cooking. Cook once, serve twice, C-O-S-D. And um, so, uh, you know what? Instead of thing, I'm gonna put some garlic sauce. This is Polish garlic sauce. I'm gonna put some of that on there, on the bottom. Um, Cause just because I'm mixing it all up here. Uh, what was I saying? Homemade gourmet. Cost. Oh, and so we did that. When you repurpose, they don't know it's leftovers. Yeah. To showcase something unique. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Kind of like when we did the pork tenderloin. Um, I don't have a, you know, as, as things go, you know, it's hard to buy a pork loin. Cook one, serve twice. There you go. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons I did the pork loin. Because if you're only feeding two and you buy that big pork loin, that's a lot of pork to eat, right? Ugh. Okay, garlic sauce, yum, because hello. All right, garlic sauce, I'm gonna put smoked Gouda on there. Oh, I gotta shred some more. Um, but anyway, so cook one, serve twice. What you would do is you would do that, like I said, that chicken enchilada chicken. You would use that seasoning and you would make chicken enchilada chicken. And it was that seasoned with that seasoning. And then um, when you were done, you would take all your, cause you would do a, like eight 
breasts or thighs or whatever, and then whatever chicken was left, you would shred all that up. And then you would take the leftover, we don't call it leftover, it's the Kroger right now has buy one, get two free, chicken thighs and legs. Does it really? I may have to go to Kroger today. Um, oh, oh, the big ones. Yeah, I use those a lot. Um, and then you would make, you take that chicken and you'd make um, King Ranch casserole or chicken enchilada soup or um, quesadillas or chicken tacos or something like that, right? Okay, so I have this on here. I am gonna put some of the seasoning on there just because you need stuff. And I may go ahead, um, what else should we put on here? I may just do cheese, cause that's good. Cheese, cheese, cheese. Okay, with lots of seasoning. Well, I could, ooh, you know what I could have done? Spinach with big chunks of garlic. Wouldn't that be yummy? Oh, okay. I'm rolling. Rolling, rolling. How's the focaccia, Jess? 30 seconds. 30 seconds she has. Got groceries yesterday and stocked up. It's the Tyson's brand. Okay, I may have to go. Okay, so um, Jean said not a whole lot of meals because she doesn't have the freezer space. I don't know if you guys remember, but um, COVID took out my freezer. And so, um, I don't have a freezer either. The only freezer I have is the one in here. So, I can't do a whole lot too. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. I certainly could do that. Um, okay. I just cut these into eights. And I'm going to use this big one. The big one, I tell you. You're starving. Oh, you're doing low cal. Well, all right. I'm going to do cut side up. Cut side up. Ugh. There we go. And then we'll just go all the way around. Can you see? La, 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 la. And these will poof out just a little bit, right? So that's okay. Well, I guess I could have cut them more, but that's okay. I'm going to do this where they are this way. Okay. Look at that. Go. All right. So I'm gonna put that in the oven too, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take out our focaccia so that we can taste it and then get off. All right, this is going upstairs. Yeah, I changed it. Oh, she changed it, okay. Oh, look at those cute little focaccias. Eat that one, she says. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I gotta get this stuff off my hands. Um, you're starving. <laughs> low cal or low carb? Okay, look at this. Oh, where's my plate? Oh, here it is. All right, so I got I got that on there. But let's do let's do one of these two. Can I just pick it up? Oh yes, because nothing sticks on here. <gasps> look at this. Oh, look how pretty that is. Is that gorgeous? Look at that. A baby focaccia. A baby faux focaccia. Faux focaccia. All right, do I want to cut this one in half? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna cut it in half. Jessica leaves the hot platter right here and no. Okay, there we go. Look, I cut it in half so you can see what it looks like. Look how good that is. It's very hot. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm. Because smoked Gouda is a bomb. Mm. The smoked Gouda. It's so Gouda. Mm. Mm. All right. Mm. Dang, that's good. I hope you enjoyed today. Spinach would be good. Yes, I agree. I hope you enjoyed today's shows. So we did our little pizza roll-ups, right? Look how cute those are. And we did our faux focaccia. Right? Our little baby faux focaccias. I hope you had a good time. And I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it from my heart. From my kitchen to yours. May everything you make be quick, easy, and most importantly, yummy. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Have a great rest of the weekend. Bye, everybody.